Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video on the tropics. And so, in this video, we're going to be talking about our two active tropical cyclones, Sam and Victor, as well as that new disturbance that was identified uh, very early this morning. And it is going to be accelerating to the northwest and might be a threat to portions of the United States. And so, we'll also take a look at what the GFS model is forecasting, as well as favorability across the basin. And so, before I go into details, all right and so let's kick start things with our active tropical cyclones and so first up let's talk about victor so going to the cone forecast from the national hurricane center we're seeing here that victor is a depression with winds of 35 miles per hour and it is accelerating to the northwest at 16 miles per hour so by early tomorrow morning it is expected to become post tropical and it will likely dissipate probably before the middle part of this week fortunately it's not going to be a threat to land and its remnants are likely to stay in the open waters just lingering around until they eventually dissipate as well and so now let's go on to that satellite view of it and we're seeing here that we really don't have any circulation of the system but we do have that new spot of some very deep convection associated with it but that will probably dissipate very soon and uh, now let's go on to SAM and so we're seeing that on satellite we do not have a clear eye of SAM and it is a weakening tropical cyclone as it accelerates in the North Atlantic. So going on to the cone forecast for it. We're seeing here that it is a category 2 hurricane with winds of 105 miles per hour and it is making its way to the northeast at 17 miles per hour. So by tomorrow afternoon it is likely to become post-tropical as a hurricane and it is really going to be lingering out there and then it might uh, be around the vicinity of Greenland as well as Iceland probably by sometime during the end of this week but the system is not expected to be very strong to bring any devastating impacts to those areas if it is going to be in very close proximity. And so now let's go ahead and talk about that new disturbance. So as you're seeing it is given a 20% chance to potentially develop into a tropical cyclone during the next five days and so the chance is low because of course it is newly identified but one once that favorability is going to persist ahead of it, then we will see this chance gradually increasing. And so imminent development is not anticipated because the environment that it is currently in is not so supportive. And we will look at favorability uh, very shortly. And that highlighted area just off the southeastern coast of the U.S. is where we could see some development taking place. So I don't think this will become anything very, very strong, but we really have to wait and see what is going to be the eventual outcome with it. But I would say as of right now, if you're in portions of the southeastern U.S., Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas, you want to keep an eye on this as time goes by because it might potentially move inland. And so let's take a closer look at it. So let's look at the satellite imagery of the Western Atlantic. And so here we have it. A lot of shower and thunderstorm activity even extending into portions of the Caribbean. So the Turks and Caicos Islands, the Bahamas, uh, and portions of the Greater Antilles as well, including Cuba, Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, and even Jamaica could feel impacts from this. Uh, there probably are going to be some periods of a very heavy rainfall and even just some overcast skies. So you want to be mindful of that, guys, as time goes by. But of course, if we're going to have development, this is going to eventually get a bit more compact and organized, and we won't have such a wide or broad area of shower and thunderstorms. And so now let us go ahead and take a look at conditions. And so in terms of the ocean temperatures in the Caribbean uh, and also off the east coast of the U.S., they are conducive enough to enable that new disturbance to get in shape and develop. And in the Caribbean, there are very, very warm ocean temperatures here. And so uh, if we're going to be having any disturbances making their way in, once the shear is conducive and there is not a lot of dry air, they will certainly have the potential to develop because conditions are likely to be favorable in that case. So we could see storms developing rapidly as well once conditions are favorable because right now the Caribbean is basically the warmest section of the basin, especially uh, just between Jamaica and Cuba right there where you're seeing that 31 degrees Celsius. So those areas are some very, very warm spots in terms of the sea surface temperatures. And now let's go on to the wind shear map. And so we're seeing here that we have 
of the different colors that indicate the favorability of the shear. So we have the green, that means favorable, the yellow means neutral, and the red means unfavorable. So when you see a lot of those red lines stretching across the basin, that indicates that the shear is quite strong and we won't generally have much development or intensification because what it does is usually cut off those thunderstorms and prevent them from developing much. And so we're seeing that just off the east coast where our disturbance is headed, uh, that area has some favorable shear setting in and that is when we could have some development. So conditions are expected to become a little more conducive, probably just marginally conducive to enable this to develop. So I think that the most that this could be is a weak tropical storm or probably a tropical depression. But we will wait and see what is going to eventually happen. But as for the rest of the basin, a lot of unfavorable shear is there across the Gulf of Mexico, the Bahamas, and portions of the main development region. So this is going to be significant in preventing any tropical waves or any, any other disturbances from developing. But this is something that changes rapidly. So we will see what's going to be happening during the next couple of days. All right. So finally, in terms of favorability, let's look at the Saharan dust. And so the different colors indicate how dense it is so that light yellow going the going to that bright orange that indicates that there is not a lot of dust there uh, but as we go to the darker orange the red and that pink shade that is when we have a lot of dust the environment is very hostile to prevent uh, tropical cyclone development because it is dry air which inhibits moisture which is what our tropical cyclones need so uh, that pocket of saharan dust is making its way across portions of the caribbean most of the lesser antilles should be experienced in some hazy skies right now as a result of all this dust and so this is likely to make its way continually to the west and then it might blanket other regions such as the greater Antilles. And so now let's go ahead and take a look at what our GFS model is showing and so this is a map that shows the isobars and the isobars are lengths of equal pressure so when you see them being very close in a circular manner with the pressure being below 1013 millibars that's a low pressure system and can be our tropical cyclone so looking in the vicinity uh, of that disturbance we're seeing here that we don't have much going on, but we do have quite a bit of moisture associated with it. And we also have some notable moisture in portions of the South Caribbean. And so as we head to Sunday, the 10th of October, we don't see much become of it. We don't see it becoming a tropical cyclone, but all that moisture is extending across portions of the Bahamas, the Greater Antilles, and even up to Florida. But take a look out in the main development region. We do have a 1006 millibar low pressure system, which could be a disturbance at that point but let's go further out and so by monday the 11th uh here we have 1008 millibar low pressure system probably the strongest that the disturbance that is currently there is going to get uh based on what the gfs is showing and we don't see much become of that disturbance out there so gfs is not expecting anything significant to be developing during the next couple of days but we do see hints of subtropical cyclone development we do have that 1002 millibar low pressure system in the vicinity of the Azores and we also have that 1003 uh, broad low pressure area well to the east of Bermuda so we really have to wait and see what is going to eventually happen and we're seeing another change here remember that they were expecting that we would have development in the Caribbean now they're just showing that plentiful moisture in the region but now they're not showing uh, us having any tropical cyclones developing so we really have to wait and see what is going to be the eventual outcome as time progresses and as of right now, if you're in the southeastern U.S., you want to keep an eye on the tropics. But development is not guaranteed of that disturbance. And so, guys, of course, I will keep you updated as time goes by. And so, if you found this video to be quite informative, please give a thumbs up. And you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question. I will try to respond as best and as soon as I can. And just remember to always be otherwise. And I will keep you updated as time goes by.